Diara Kilpatrick plays Diara Brickland in Diara from Detroit. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. I wanted to kick things off by asking you, uh, Diara, who also created the show and executive producers, what did you discover? Well, did you discover anything that surprised you when making this show? Mm. Yeah, I think, you know, I had a strong theory (laughs) that... I could write a show, star in a show, executive produce a show ever since I was a little kid in Detroit, like growing up in my bedroom. I guess I was a multi hyphenate of sorts, um, producing the show, gathering people to watch it, galvanizing my friends to be a part of it. But I hadn't actually done it before. You know, I hadn't actually made a full length season of television. Um, I had done a digital series before that where the whole thing altogether was maybe an hour and a half of content or something. And moving through it, it was incredibly challenging. Um, There were moments where I was like, oh, this is, this is, you know, people say sometimes that show running is like being beaten to death by your own dream. And there were certainly (laughs) moments where I felt like that was happening. Um, but when I moved through the entire process, I was like, oh shit, you can do this. Like you, your, your theory was correct. You got this. Oh, nice. When, when you were young and you like sort of had that dream, was there a particular uh, show or a couple of shows that you sort of like thought that inspired you to want to do that? I never thought about it that way. Okay. I mean, I I really was, you know, I'm kind of the only child, my mom's only child, only child growing up in the house. And that was how I entertained myself, you know, singing, dancing, making skits. I, I really didn't think it was like an actual job when I was really young. Um, but I watched a lot of, there weren't that many choices when I was growing up, you know? So I think I watched what everybody watched. I watched Martin, Living Single, Fresh Prince, you know, those kind of sit half hour sitcoms were kind of my bread and butter for entertainment. Mm. Now, Diara in the show is known as Captain Extra. Um, <laughs> are, you, are, are you also a Captain Extra in your life? Yeah, listen to how many jobs I had on the show. I'm doing the most. Listen, I they had to stop me from trying to write songs. Um I I think there are definitely I I feel like I'm probably an all or nothing kind of person. Like if I'm really passionate about something, I'm given 110%. And if I don't care, it is really hard for me to motivate to be captain gives any teeny amount of shit. It's like it's it's yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of all or nothing a lot of the time. Uh, and like I guess with the show, what like how would you describe the character you play? Ooh, she's so much fun to play um, because she's really passionate. You know, anything she's doing, she's doing a hundred and fifty percent. She's fragile. She's emotionally. Um, she's emotionally fragile. Like she's, she's going through a divorce, but I think she's emotionally fragile anyway. And I think that's, what's fun about playing essentially a private investigator. She becomes a private investigator, but the biggest mystery she's ever going to try to solve is, is herself and what's going on in her own life. And so she's, she's just one of those women who's never going to sit back and let life happen to her. And that's, and she's, she's funny. She's smart. Um, and, and she's, she is unrelenting in her quest to, to find out the truth. And that's really fun. Mm. And I guess like, um, as, as, as an actor, like you need to be unrelenting in finding the truth in characters and scenes and moments and stuff, uh, like that. How, how do you feel you're like her and also how you not like her? Hmm. Well, I think, listen, I like to be at home, you know, (laughs) I like to be at home on the couch watching TV. I'm not the person that's going to be going in the burning building. Um, I'm doing that for your amusement and entertaining entertainment. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a much, I'm probably more cautious uh, than she is and more of a couch potato. Um, And she's got a healthy libido. 
you know, she likes, <laughs> she, she has a really fun idea of a Friday night, I think, which is like getting some and, you know, um, she's got a lot of spirit um, and she's really protective of the people that she cares about. In this instance, she meets this Tinder date. They go on one magical date, but she cares about him at this point and she's not going to leave him hanging if she thinks she can help. And that's the same thing about her students. She's not going to leave them hanging if, if she can help it. And, you know, I'm human, but... I, I pray that I am blessed to be a blessing that, you know, that having me in your life is going to be an uplifting, beautiful, wonderful thing. And so I think, I think we're similar in that way. It's like, she got her people. She really, really does. Mm. With that Tinder date from the pilot episode, she, like, what does it say about her that she just will not believe that she's been ghosted? which sort of kicks off her whole like mystery investigation. Yeah. Yo, she is the poster child for Delulu women everywhere. Um, that's true. She, she, she should be fully wrong about this. Like most of the time when you don't hear from someone, <laughs> it's because they don't want to be heard from. Um, they don't like you. Um, and so in this particular case, like she has such a gut feeling that he does like her and that they did have such a beautiful time that she happens to be right. Um, but homegirl is 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 delusional um, for the most <laughs> for the most part. And I think sometimes you can be delusional in the best way, which is to say, you know, it's it was probably delusional for me to <laughs> dream up a dream of of writing, starring, you know, acting in a, in a television show. Um, so about my hometown. Um, so I support, I support going after things that maybe don't make a ton of sense. <laughs> the show has, you know, moments of, of, of heavy drama. Uh, it's got some lovely like comedy moments. It's also got this mystery that you're trying to solve. How do you sort of balance those different elements when you're approaching the the show? Mm. You know, the pitch was always, you know, sex in the city, crash lands into Chinatown, drop the whole thing in chocolate. Um, I think there was a lot of, in the writer's room, trial and error of figuring out, you know, how to balance which parts of the story. I think we figured out early on that each episode really needed to be driven by where Diara was emotionally, um, that we could have all the twists and turns that we wanted, but that we really wanted to ground it in, in her journey um, and in the arcs of the people around her that they felt like really, um, really meaningful journeys that that none of the cast would ever be the same because of these events. Um, so I, I don't know that there's like a particular ratio of, of mystery to drama to comedy, um, but it was, a, it was pretty um, instinctual, honestly, as, as we moved along the the breaking of this of this story and the writing of these episodes what was the biggest challenge for you in approaching this show we had a lot to do <laughs> like I said never again <laughs> like never <laughs> ever again well I write an effing cold case and then the the case had to be solved in the present and then the past and then it was it was it was a lot to handle this this season and on on top of it we also wanted to honor the fact that this was the story of a real woman, you know, who fell into private investigating. She's not a cop. She's not trained by the military. She's a regular woman. And so we also wanted the stakes to really fall on me as an actor and for, for the audience to feel like it wasn't just completely bizarro land. Like the things that were happening had, had stakes and would have weight moving, would impact her going forward. Um, so that it was it was it was challenging um in in the breaking of it um and i think a lot of our problems were solved um or, or i don't want to say problems but i think we really kind of 
found the tone and the spirit of it in in the editing when everything started to come together and we could we could um you know play into the comedy in certain scenes and then pull back and really let the suspense do more work and that was such a beautiful dance that Miles Orion Feldside our EP and and Iris Hirschner the editor who did the the pilot really sort of developed a nice language for us mm. What was one of your favorite scenes to shoot? Oh man, that's such a great question. Um, I had a lot of fun. Like people keep keep talking about the Lucy Ethel dynamic in the show between me and and the Moni character. I love that kind of um, the moments where I got to go into the kind of broader Lucy comedy. Um, so I loved, uh, the scene when I go into the crack house and you don't really know how this is going to end. It's such a dangerous situation and that, and getting to kind of hurl that bat, um, at that unsuspecting addict, um, uh, <laughs> wildly, that was a lot of fun. Um, I, I loved a lot of the two person scenes where I would get to really spar with whether it was Claudia who plays Moni or, or Morris who plays Swa. Um, but I loved like kind of volleying the energy back and forth in those two two person scenes. Yeah. What 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 do you love most about acting? Oh man, it's it's my first love. Like even beyond like boys. Like I think I'm so like, what's your first love? You know, probably my mom and then acting. Um, I think I went to this school for uh black nerds where everyone was really smart. <laughs> Everybody was really smart or really good at something. And I remember doing a play in the fourth grade. We did the whiz and my, they didn't, they didn't make me audition. My teacher just was like her, she just kind of knew. And I think, um, when I got up there and did that, and it was something that nobody else could really do as well. I felt like, Oh, this is my thing. And I felt like I was flying and I felt like it's something that I really feel on the stage and I'm feeling more and more on, on camera work, but just that feeling of like being super present and flying. It's so much fun. Mm. Uh, when, when you, who are you playing the Wiz? I played Dorothy. Oh, nice. And is, is that like production that like performance, is that when you fell in love with acting? Yeah. Yeah, oh. for sure. For sure, that's where I where I fell in love, um, and I just love embodying other people's stories. Like yeah. it's to just get out of your own circumstances and out of your out of the 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 limitations of you. Um, I just I just love that, and I've gotten a chance, especially on the stage, to play different cultures, different sexualities, different identities, and it's been. It's been really, really fun and it broadens who I am. Mm. It's really, really cool. Yeah. What was something about playing uh, Diara Brickland in this show that sort of brought in the way you thought about things or something you learned from playing her? Yeah, man. Diara is, the character is much more audacious and bold than Diara Kilpatrick, mm. the the person. And I think I was stepping into my boldness as I was playing her and sort of a more unapologetic version of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that person was born certainly in the making of, in the making of the show. And the other thing I think is um, being a servant you know, like at the end of the day, like this whole fun, sexy, mysterious, violent ride is really about a woman who is a social servant. <laughs> like that's what she's, she's trying to find a lost child at the end of the day. Um, and I think I'm trying to service um, Black women as, as um, a leading character. I think I'm trying to service my community. I think I'm trying to service the entertainment industry and the audience. I feel like a servant at the end of the day. And so I learned that from, from DR Brooklyn as well. And I imagine too, like, like in a very basic way, you're also 
serving whichever act you're in a scene with and trying to offer them something they can work off and 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 can can you think of a scene where you did like where and, and it could be them serving you as well because sort of, I think mm. sort of like it's so collaborative acting but can you think of a, a moment where you sort of served your scene partner and they served you particularly well yeah I, I will say um Iris Hirschner who is our our editor she did the the pilot and the finale and she also just had really smart ideas as we were moving through the whole process and she said something to me like you have chemistry with everyone she's like you have chemistry with everyone and I've never seen that before she said the only person I've seen that before is um uh Christina um she was the she was the lead in Dead to Me on Netflix Applegate oh Applegate yeah um she's like I, and and Iris edited that show as well and she said she said, only seen that in Christina Applegate. And that was such a big compliment to me because it made me feel like, I hope that that means that I'm really open and, <laughs> and you can fling at me what you got and I'll receive it and fling it, fling that energy right back at you. And we're going to be in a really beautiful dance. And so I remember the first day Morris came in and, you know, Morris is someone who's been on my wall. Okay. When I was 16, he's, you know, he's more shit than it. And so I was really excited for him to come, but there was a part of me that was like, oh shit, like <laughs> I'm about to act with more shit than now. And um, I have to say he came in that day. So um, chill. He had a script. He had little notes on the script. You know, he knew his lines. He was ready to go. And we were in the hallway in the school and we just dove into that argument and it was, he was so open and prepared that it just was kind of like a magical moment. And I remember Chioke, our director was like, y'all seem married. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, oh, great. So I felt like in that instance, um, he just really, he just really came ready to play. And in another scene, John Chapin, who plays Danger, there was big scene, there's a big twist. Um, in episode seven with his character and he tells this story and that actor was so full and so ready and so full of the story you know it wasn't a story on the page it was like he had lived it and he was letting it all out that all I had to do was just stand there and look at him I mean he he really served me well as a scene partner um and you know, I feel like I served the other actors because I'm just, I know what I'm going for. Like it's, I cheat a little bit because I write a lot of it. <laughs> so it's like, I know what I need from them. Mm. And I, and I do my damnedest to get it. And I, and also I want to have fun because mm. I'm like, why the hell have I gone through all this work if we're not having fun? And so that's, I think that's the other thing I bring to it is like, y'all, let's have a good time. Yeah. And uh, to, quickly to finish off, Diara, what, if you could like summarize the show in one sentence, what sentence would you use to, uh, what, what would it be? I would say ghosted school teacher um, tracks down her Tinder date and becomes a badass PI. I love it. Uh, well, Tiara, thanks so much for chatting with us today. Best of luck for the Emmy Awards for Diara from oh. Detroit. And uh, people can go to goldderby.com to track our awards odds, join the discussion, our forums, and see other interviews. Diara, thanks so much for your time. This was lovely. Matt from Sydney, I appreciate you. Thank you.